Okay, so in our previous example, we used a very crude assumption that the business is going to increase its sales by 5% and increase its asset base by 5% to accommodate that growth in sales. Now, that was a bit of a thumb suck. And in reality, the business will be very careful about calculating what that growth rate should be. We call that growth rate the internal growth rate. Okay? That means how much can I grow my business without taking on any additional funding. So at the end of the year, we're going to have some net profit after tax. And we're going to use that net profit, assuming that we pay no dividends out, uh, to feed our business again with funding that we can use to grow our asset base. Now, there are two ways you can calculate what that internal growth rate is. The one is to use, in our previous example, some plug and play. So we're just looking at our, our income statement. And we're trying to figure out what the right amount of sales is to get, to get a net profit that is going to uh, match the increase in the asset base that we need to fund that. Or what we can do is use what's called the internal growth rate formula, which looks like this. So we're going to use G to represent the internal growth rate. And the formula for that is our return on net assets multiplied by the retention ratio divided by 1 minus that figure. So let me go quickly through these, through these terms. B is simply an indication of the organization's retention ratio. That's also known as its plowback ratio. It simply means it's the net profit after tax at the end of the year that's not being distributed to shareholders, but is rather being absorbed back into the business. The RONA stands for return on net assets. Okay. The return is simply the amount of profit at the end of the year, your net income or your net profit after tax that you've generated as a percentage of the net assets which you've used to generate that net profit. Okay. Net assets in this case is simply your fixed assets plus your uh, net working capital which is, as you'll remember in accounting, your current assets less your current liabilities. Okay. So simply put, your net assets are your fixed assets plus your current, current, current assets, less your current liabilities. Okay. So to get this formula, we're looking for net income divided by fixed assets plus current assets, less current liabilities. Okay. So let's calculate that. We know that in our previous example, we had a net asset base of 100. Okay. We didn't have any current liabilities, so we can assume that our full asset base of fixed assets and current assets is simply 100. And we know that our return, remember our net profit after tax, was 4 at the end of the year. So our formula for ROLA, which is net income over net assets, is going to look just like that. 4 divided by 100, which is 4%. So to calculate our growth rate, our internal growth rate, we simply take 4% and divide 4% against the balance of 4% on, on 100. So that's going to look like this. 4% at the top, 96% at the bottom. And that will give you 4.17%. So let's write it bigger down here. 4.17%. So by using that formula, we can see that in order to grow a business uh, as much as we can without taking on any uh, additional funding, that's the figure that we're trying to chase. Okay. So if our growth was 100 last year, we want our, uh, sorry, if our sales were 100 last year, we want our sales uh, this year to be 104,17. Okay, so assuming that we've got a growth internal growth rate of 4.17%, we can then use that figure to calculate our pro forma balance sheet and pro forma income statement for the year to follow. Okay, so we're going to say 2012 is our coming up year. I'm going to start off by taking the uh, net profit after tax from the previous year and investing that into our assets. So we're going to start with an asset base of 104. Okay, our equity is now going to change because we're putting this four rand of retained earnings uh, and representing that as equity in a balance sheet. So we're looking at a balance sheet of 104. 
For that to all balance out, we want to increase our sales by 4.17%. So 40 times 4.17%, I think, is 41.7. Our cost of goods sold is always a function of our sales, so that also needs to follow the growth formula. So 30 times uh, 4.17 is 31.3. And that's going to give us a profit before interest of tax of 10.4. Our interest here, we're going to assume, is the same. I haven't uh, written off any debt here. Uh, I just haven't to decrease the debt here, just to keep things simple. We can assume that we pay that debt off on at the end of the, of the uh, period. And that gives us a profit before tax of 5.4. 20% of that is 1.1. And that leaves us at the end of the year with 4.3. So you can see those are very close uh, figures. And we know that we have an, enough net profit to sustainably continue this, this cycle. Okay. So in investing four rand here, we had an asset base of 104. That was more than enough to generate uh, sales of 41.7, which then led through to a net profit after tax of 4.3, which then we can repeat the process for. Um, and keep growing our business at that rate without getting any uh, financing from, from the outside. The only thing to note here, however, is that if we continue this process, our debt to equity ratio is going to keep changing. And that brings us to the next point, uh, which is the sustainment. Okay, so the next concept I'm going to um, go through is called the sustainable growth rate, which is measured by, uh, indicated by G star. So as the internal growth rate measures the amount that the company can grow without taking on any additional financing at all, your sustainable growth rate tells you how much you can grow with only taking on debt financing up until the point that it matches your retained earnings. So in our example from, the, from 2011, we made four rand of net profit after tax with our pizza business. If we were, we were then in 2012 to take on another four rand of debt to match that, that retained earnings, we would then be operating at our uh, sustainable growth rate. So two things to, to remember, your internal growth rate is simply the growth that you can achieve only through your retained earnings. Your sustainable growth rate is the amount of uh, growth that you can achieve by keeping your capital structure the same uh, without taking on any new shareholder funds. Okay, so let's go through the formula. Formula is represented by G star equals return on equity, your opening balance, multiplied by your retention ratio. So for this example, we're going to stick with our assumption that a retention ratio is 100% or, or 1, as it's indicated mathematically. Now from your accounting of course, you'll remember that the return on equity is measured by, by three things. We use what's called the DuPont identity to come up with our return on equity. So those, the, those are those famous three pillars, your profitability, prof, excuse me, profitability, your asset efficiency, and your company's financial leverage. And there are three formulas to, to remember here. For your prof, prof, profitability, it's your, your net profit after tax at the end of the year divided by your sales. For your asset efficiency, you're looking at your sales divided by your total asset base. And for your financial leverage, you're looking at your total asset base as a percentage of your equity uh, opening balance. So let's write that down. So remember that your return on equity is a function of profitability. Which is represented by NPAT over sales or revenue. Your asset efficiency, which is represented by your sales over your assets. And finally, your financial leverage, which is simply an indicator of your debt to equity ratio. But for the purposes of the return on equity, you're going to use the formula assets over your equity balance at the beginning of the year. Okay, so let's calculate those values from, from our figures in 2011 because 
remember we need to use last year's uh, equity balance. So our NPAT was four. Okay, our sales were forty. Our asset base was a hundred. And our equity balance at the beginning of the year was fifty. Okay. If you cancel out your assets here and your sales here, you're going to get a formula of uh, sorry, yeah, formula of four over fifty, which is simply eight percent. Okay. So our pizza business can grow sustainably at eight percent a year if we take on enough debt to match our equity so that the capital structure of 50% doesn't change. So using our sustainable growth rate of 8%, we're going to say that in 2012, we're going to grow this by 8%, so that's going to be 43.2. Our cost of goods sold is going to grow by 8%, so that's 32.4. That's going to give us a profit before interest of tax of 10.8. Again, we take off our interest, which is not a function of sales. That's going to leave us with 5.8. We're going to pay 1.2 on tax. And that will leave us with a final net profit after tax of 4.6. So to do that, we know that the retained earnings that we used in the previous year uh, are going to increase our equity balance from 50 to 54 and if we want to uh, reach our sustainable growth rate of 8% then we'll have to take on an additional 4 round of debt to match that equity so that our capital structure doesn't change and we still don't need to take on any additional shareholder funds to reach that level of growth. Okay. So we had an asset base here of 100 and that's grown here to 108, so 4 from retained earnings, 4 from debt, and that's enabled us to achieve a profit of 4.6, which we will be able to then invest in our next year uh, as retained earnings, match that with debt so that our de debt to equity ratio doesn't change, and we will be able to continually uh, grow at that rate sustainably, hence the name sustainable growth rate.